Alright, let's keep it completely real. The New York Knicks shit their pants tonight. They choked. The moment was too big for them. Or the moments. Because there was like a 3-4 minute stretch in that fourth quarter where we couldn't orchestrate any type of offense. The New York Knicks lose to the Orlando Magic at Madison Square Garden. The final score being 98-94. to This is a different Magic team that we lost to. As we were a different team as well, we didn't have OG Ananobi, we still had RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly, obviously, on this roster, but they were a top five seed, they had Franz Wagner healthy, they had Mo Wagner healthy, they had Gary Harris healthy, none of those guys played in this basketball game, and now they're the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference, maybe they bumped themselves up after this win, but this has been a different Magic team, Franz Wagner's been out the last five games, So when it comes to a chemistry standpoint, there definitely had to be some meshing to do when it comes to this Magic team, and they really figured it out in the fourth quarter. The New York Knicks were up as many as seven points in that fourth quarter, and we were entering that fourth quarter kind of feeling good, but we knew there's players on the Magic that are capable of getting hot, such as a Cole Anthony, you know, Markel Fultz, when it comes to production, coming off the bench. You take a look at a Pavel Bancaro, he's obviously the head of the snake, and even though Franz Wagner, like, he's a very good player, in my opinion, Pavel Bancaro is the best player on that Magic team. But it just sucks to lose this game, even though we didn't have Jalen Brunson, Mitchell Robinson continues to be out. Like, we're missing that main operator, that main guy that orchestrates the offense. McBride scored the ball at a very high level. He scored 20 points, you know, which was actually, he was our leading scorer, which is crazy to say in this game that Miles McBride was our leading scorer. And he shot the three ball very well. He competed his ass off defensively. He was hustling his ass off when it came to the Magic. Like when the Magic would get out and run in transition. He was getting back, trying to get a deflection. He played extremely hard. And you love seeing the growth in his offensive game. But if we enter the playoffs with this dude, there's going to be a big time learning element. Because he's still learning the offense. Hopefully he figures it out as the season goes on. But Tom Thibodeau is yelling at him to get into his sets faster. You know, Dante DiVincenzo was really frustrated with him in the fourth quarter because there was a moment, like a few moments, that McBride was just pounding the air out of the basketball. He was very exceptional when it came to, like, the start of the first quarter up until, like, the beginning of the fourth quarter. He kind of collapsed halfway through the fourth quarter. He just didn't really know what to do with the basketball. So there's a learning element there. But obviously, he's not going to continue to be our starting point guard moving forward. You have to think about that. Brunson's obviously going to come back, and the rotations are different. You know, Malachi Flynn, never give that guy minutes again. No disrespect to Malachi Flynn, but he, that was kind of disrespectful, not going to lie, but he struggled out there. Precious Achua really struggled out there. Hornstein didn't play that well. He got into foul trouble. You know, he rebounded the ball well, but honestly, defensively, he didn't move his feet well, and and I actually do have to hold him accountable. We talk about just Julius Randle allowing offensive rebounds. He allowed tons of offensive rebounds and he was a big part of it as well when it came to allowing multiple offensive rebounds in a row versus trying to the Dallas Mavericks when Josh Green hit that right wing three ball but it's just so frustrating when it comes to the standpoint that this was such a winnable game and I understand again Bronson's our best player and he did not play but you expect more from Julius Randle and there was a moment Randle got the rebound and his foot was stepped on but to miss those big time free throws down the stretch It's just unacceptable, and it sucks because he started the third quarter off very well, shooting the three ball well, and he looked like he still kind of had that burst even, not looking 100% when he had that spin move, but his shots were just way off, just way off. He did not bring it tonight. He was extremely inefficient. He was terrible defensively, like really, really bad. There's plays that he like decides to run, and then there's plays he decides not to run, and I hate when he's just swiping down at the basketball and not making a real defensive play. And that's the thing with Randall. Randall's not a closer. OG, he doesn't have a role, the role to be a closer. You know, Brunson's the main closer out there on the floor. I have confidence that Brunson's going to close games. When Brunson's not playing, I'm sorry, I do not have consistent confidence in Julius Randall to knock down like a clutch mid-range jumper, a clutch three-pointer, you know, clutch free throw sometimes. Like he can execute from the free throw line tonight. He didn't though. He's not a consistently clutch player. He's not a consistently high IQ basketball player. The offense looked out of sorts. It looked like there wasn't much chemistry out there on the floor. But this was a game that the New York Knicks like were leading. We were up as many as 11 points in the second half. We were up seven at the beginning of this game. Like it's such a winnable game. McBride started off like he he scored the heck out of the ball. OG Ananobi start like started hot. And I wanted to talk about that. So and by the way, if we won this game, like we just needed to like it's, I'm not gonna say it's a must win. 
But for the way this game went, like it kind of is because you look at the East Eastern Conference when it comes to like that fourth seed to the sixth seed, or maybe you can even say the eighth seed. There's like what a three game differential. Like it's such a small margin of error when it comes to losing these games that you could possibly go from dropping to that sixth seed to the eighth seed. I'm not sure where the Magic are now. But when we played them before, they were a top five seed. They're a different team now when it comes to injuries, and they're the eight seed. Maybe they're six or seven now. But it's like a one to two game differential when it comes to that what fourth seed to that sixth seed as we keep on going back and forth. The Pacers had a loss last night, which hurts. So let's get to the beginning of this game to touch on this real quick. OG, OG Ananobi starts off hot. We get him involved. Julius Randle gave him a dribble handoff, you know, and he was able to drive to the basket, draw a foul, execute from the free throw line. Awesome. Corner three, catch and shoot, trailed it. Off the dribble, pull up mid-range jumper, beautiful. Right wing three ball, awesome. But the confusing thing, I don't think it's a lack of aggression from OG because we've seen when he gets the ball, he does look to attack. There was just one moment that he stepped out of bounds and he traveled. And then one play was kind of awkward that he fell to the ground that I thought was a foul. He almost postered two guys, so there is that level of aggression. But in my opinion, he's too talented of a player to only be getting 11 shots in the offense. And it's not an RJ thing. It's not an OG thing. It doesn't matter. It's the system of Tom Thibodeau. These guys are just placed in the corner. There's more movement with OG, but there needs to be consistent movement with this guy. We need to consistently get him involved. You know, he was efficient as hell from three, but it's but it's like totally different in a way. Even though he was consistent from three, there was many possessions going by that he just wasn't touching the rock or at least getting a shot up because of the offense. And then we expect him to hit like a big time three in a big time moment after Julius Randle, or maybe it was after, it was in the fourth quarter in a big moment. Julius Randle missed two huge free throws that would have tied the game. Didn't miss one, missed two. It just sucks you can't count on this dude in the clutch. Like McBride just all over the place. So OG starts off very well. He had 17 points. He even had like kind of a big time momentum changing three in that fourth quarter. At least we thought. And then we decided to play no defense. Let Cole Anthony do whatever the hell he wanted. Out there on the floor, dribble penetrate. Put Julius Randle in a blender. Pull a mid-range jumper. It's just when it comes to a basketball IQ standpoint, leadership standpoint, consistent effort, can you count on Randall? Can you count on him? And I did see a report by Stefan. So it was by Stefan Bondi of the New York Post. Is Julius Randall really in trade packages? Because is he a fit here? Is Randall, and I'm not trying to overreact when it comes to one game, but we've seen Randall at this point. He's like He was hurt in the playoffs last year, but there's no excuse that the first time he was in the playoffs. There's no excuse like... To shoot that percentage is unacceptable. Even when injured, I've never seen a player shoot, what, 30%, 25%? Like, those are numbers from 1930s, like Dolph Shays days. There's, And it's just like the defense, the rebounding, the Harnstein and box out. No one really boxed out tonight. And I'm just so glad it's not a regular rotation with Malachi Flynn playing because he's not a very good player. But the Magic's bench dominated our bench. What Quinn Grimes is our leading scorer off the bench for like eight or nine points. He was very efficient from three, but we no answer for Cole Anthony when it came to that bench. You know, they had better bench production. Josh Hart had his coast to coast finishes, tried to initiate offense, but I didn't think he was that he didn't play that well defensively. You know, Wendell Carter Jr. came off the bench, he dominated, especially when it came to that fourth quarter. Three, four minute drought of we couldn't get anything going offensively. OG's one of our most efficient players in the offense. Give him the damn basketball. But no, Randall, who's shooting like two for a thousand, I understand he's hurt, doesn't have the same lift. Why do we continue to give him the ball? I understand he's our best player, but he doesn't have it tonight. You got to accept that and go within the flow of the game of what's really going on. Credit to Paolo. It felt like he was kept in check after that first quarter, stepped up in the fourth. You know, Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz gave him some momentum in that third quarter. But just for our offense to collapse like that, for us, like Dante DiVincenzo, hit some threes in this game, but he missed some free throws. Just thank God we have Jalen Brunson on this team. Just thank God. What are your takeaways from this basketball game? I thought we fouled a little too much when it came to that third quarter as well. You look at the stats here for the New York Knicks, and we got lucky as well. Like, the defense picked up in that third quarter. In the fourth quarter, like, offensively and defensively, I wasn't proud of this team at all. And I understand Caleb Houston's been an inconsistent three-point shooter. And I liked him coming out of college. But we gave him, like, so many clean looks. We just got so lucky. So lucky. We're so lucky he couldn't hit the side of the barn. This could have been a totally, totally 
different game. I'm just looking at the box score here. Yeah, their bench outclassed stars. Wendell Carter Jr., 17 points. Markel Fultz had 6 points, but they were kind of like momentum changing. and need 7 assists. Our leading, like again, our assist leader was Randall with 5. Cole Anthony, 15. This is one game, I'm not trying to overreact, but yeah, Gogo Batazzi had 11 rebounds. He had 4 offensive rebounds. We just didn't rebound well. Like, Hornstein's rebound numbers were kind of, I would say, you have to really look at this game. You can't just look at, oh, he had 12 rebounds. You really rebound the ball well. No, there were several plays that it just everyone was standing around. It was just really, really bad. But, yeah, our bench production. Grimes with 8 points. Josh Hart only had 4. Uh, yeah, Precious Achuawal, who had 6 points. 5 rebounds, 20 minutes out there on the floor. We had a shout-out to McRoddy at 20 points, 2 steals, 1 assist. Like, we need more than 1 assist. But I understand he's still getting used to that. Like, I guess actually playing consistently. But this was just a bad loss. Slack of execution. You know, Randall choked down the stretch. It sucks. Hopefully the New York Knicks bounce back and you get Brunson back because the Rockets got some players. Peace out, y'all.